Hey guys, so welcome back. This is my Actives Month and in this video, we are going to talk about retinol. So in the previous video of my Actives Month, I mentioned all about niacinamide. If you haven't watched that, the link would be in the description box. And in today's video, we are going to focus about retinol. And after watching this video, the word retinol would be much more simplified for you. I will be delving upon what is retinol, what are the uses, how it works, how you should incorporate it, what are the effects, the stuff that you should mix, the stuff that you should not mix, do's, don'ts, product recommendation, and also some of the new generation retinols, and also the plant alternatives that is really raging nowadays, that is bapchi oil or pakuchi oil. So stay tuned till the end to know everything that you need to know about retinol. Hey guys, so I'm Moitri Haldar. If you are seeing this face for the very first time, hi, I make skincare contents, which is this one, and mixed with a couple of contents that I really like. So if you are into that genre, then do consider subscribing and hitting on that bell notification to get notified every time I upload. And also do not forget to follow me in my Instagram because I am more active there and you also get to be a part of what goes into my videos. And starting from this Saturday, I will be coming live pretty much every week or every alternate week to solve any of your skincare queries and to talk to you guys in general. The link would be in the bottom of the description box. So the first question that comes in our mind is that what is retinol? Before going into what is retinol, I will mention these terms specifically mainly vitamin A, retinoic acid, retinoid, retinol and retin A. These five keywords are really important and I will be delving upon all of them. So just to brief you guys about retinol, retinol is a vitamin A derivative and vitamin A can be naturally found in our body. It helps with our immune system repairs tissue damage and also takes care of your eye health and vitamin A can be found in foods such as carrots and broccoli and these retinoic acid or retinoid or vitamin A works in a different way compared to other actives. Now retinoic acid works in the bottom part layer of your skin that is the dermis layer where the cells are produced so it regenerates new cells to create fresh new skin and pushes down the old ones to the surface and this is the continuous cycle it keeps on going and this is exactly how retinol or retinoic acid works. So normally our skin sheds every 30 days as mentioned in my chemical exfoliation video. If you want to see that the link would be in the description box and when retinoids are used it cuts down that 30 days to like 14 to 21 days. Simultaneously it also helps in a bunch of different skin concerns such as regulating the oil or sebum production, killing the P acne or the QT bacterium acne and that stuff is responsible for the breakouts and acne that your skin faces. It also evens out our skin texture and skin tone. It unclogs the pores and finally it helps with the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. Now coming on to the terms that I mentioned. Now retinol falls under this vitamin A or retinoid category. Vitamin A is a retinoid. Now retinol, retinate, retinoin, retinoic acid falls under this whole vitamin A family. Now retinoic acid is already present in our body and this is something that our skin can easily accept thus making retinoic acid much more potent and much more fast result kind of a thing due to its high potency and such fast result if not used correctly it can really harm your skin so these type of retinoic acids are only prescribed by your dermats and if you are a teenager and your dermat has suggested you a retinoid cream or a dapline cream then you are someone who are suffering from a lot of acne because retinol surprisingly is beneficial for acne and a fun fact about retinol is that this ingredient right here was invented to cure your acne problems, not exactly anti-aging stuff. And the research that they did was on adults who were facing adult acne. And majority of the people who use retinoid reported that they saw visible result in the plumpiness of their skin, reducing of their fine lines and wrinkles and overall youthfulness. And that led to the studies of retinol being a miracle and gold standard of anti aging. Now coming to retinol. Now retinol is something that is not present in our skin and it is something that our skin needs to break down first and then use it. So the enzymes that are present in our skin breaks down retinol into retinoic acid. Then that retinoic acid is the stuff that actually works. So retinol breaks into retinol dehyde and then retinoic acid. And this whole process can take up to three to four weeks or even a month. And this is the reason why retinol is 
is something that is a prevention technique compared to retin A or retinoin, which is the retinoic acid. Those things are medicinal terms and they does provide you cure in a very short amount of time. While using retinol, you need to be consistent because it is more of a prevention technique. It is much more diluted than your traditional retinoin or retin A, thus making it very much safer for your everyday usage. So it can be easily found in a lot of cosmetics and over-the-counter goods. Coming on to the next question is that what are the effects and how it exactly delivers them? Now, as I mentioned, that retinoid works on the dermis layer and it produces new cells, thus promoting healthy new skin and pushing the dead skin cells on the front. It not only does that, but also exfoliates the top layer of your skin as it is a retinoic acid, thus a chemical exfoliant. And this property not only helps in the appearance of the fine lines and wrinkles, but also it does helps you in pigmentation and also skin texturing because it is gently exfoliating your skin and also regenerating cells that promote new skin at the same time. It also thickens your dermis layer by producing more collagen, which in return plumps up your skin and makes your fine lines and wrinkles less visible. It also normalizes keratinization, thus making your pores less clogged. It also helps in your acne healing much faster because as I mentioned, retinoid was first invented to actually heal your acne because it does controls your sebum production and also unclogs your pores, kills those P acne that is a culprit for your acne and blemishes. Now coming on to the next question which is really important is that when you should start retinoin. Now if you are talking about retin A or tretinoin, you should not start retinoin or retin A until you are at an age of 40 or above. But these medicines can be a short term cure for teenage acne because if you guys suffered from a lot of acne or if you are suffering from a lot of teenage acne or even in the adult stage if you are facing a lot of hormonal acne you might have gone to a dermat and then 90 percent of the chances suggested you a treadnoin cream now coming on to retinol retinol is something that is suggested to start from your early to mid 20s and then never stop because it is a prevention technique collagen production of your skin degrades after you hit 25 and it continues to degrade it never goes up it does degrade in a really tiny amount but it does degrade and retinol can be really beneficial because it does boost up the collagen. Following up with the next question is to how to use retinoids or how you should incorporate retinoids in your existing skincare. Before delving into how to use, these are the two important factors that you should always keep in mind. First of all, in using retinoids, less is always more. You do not need like three pumps of retinols for your entire face. You just need the right amount, maybe half a pump to a pump, just enough to cover your face, not more than that, because you do not want to overdo skincare. And too much skincare is not that good. And the next most important thing that too much sensitive skin or people who are suffering from rosacea, eczema or psoriasis might not tolerate retinol at first, but that doesn't mean they cannot do in future. So if you are someone who are suffering from these conditions, try going to a dermat or try incorporating retinol at very low minimum percentage at a very minimal percentage less frequently and then gradually building upon on that. Now coming on to how to use retinol and how you should incorporate retinol in your existing skincare. Now first of all, retinol should always be applied on a dry skin. So retinoic acid is a type of chemical exfoliant and you never apply any kind of chemical exfoliants on a damp skin because it does penetrate much deeper which can be good and bad and retinol being such powerful ingredient and especially if you are a beginner, you do not want to overdo your retinol. So never apply retinol if you are a beginner on a damp skin because it can cause irritation and redness. The next most important thing is aftercare. Now, if you are using retinol, retinols does make you much more photosensitive and it can also dehydrate and dry your skin. So applying a good moisturizer, applying a good sleeping mask, applying sunscreen every single day is really important because you need to protect your skin from the sun and also from the dryness that the retinol will give and also the photosensitivities. 
having a good aftercare is really important even before thinking to include any form of retinol now retinol should be always applied at night because you do not want to apply retinol and step out in the sun if you are a pro in skincare or an intermediate you can do that but i do not suggest because light and sun can degrade the retinol that you are applying so you are investing a lot of money in your retinol so why dilute it and why harm your skin so always apply retinol at the night time never at the day time as i mentioned in the aftercare sunscreen is really important even if you are not using retinol but retinol specifically exfoliates your skin because it is a form of retinoic acid and it does exfoliate the topmost layer of your skin making it much more prone to uv or photo damage so apply sunscreen every single day and even in the winters now if you are a beginner and you are starting retinol for the first time in your life couple of tips that i really want to mention to you guys to first get into your retinol journey so applying retinol serum or retinol directly in your face can be really intimidating or it can cause a lot of irritation so you need to first introduce your skin to a retinol you can do that by mixing your moisturizer with a retinol serum or a retinol cream so it can work as a buffer and your skin can be adapted to retinols and then after a few weeks see how your skin reacts and then you can go ahead with how you will apply normally without the moisturizer another tip if you are an intermediate and if you have used retinol and you want to increase the potency a really beneficial tip is to first moisturize your skin and then apply the retinol then that moisturizer will create a buffer and also a barrier for the retinol that you are applying over it and after a week when your skin is used to that retinol then you can go ahead and put the retinoid and then you moisturizer the next question is really important is that how often should you use retinols now i won't ever suggest you guys to put retinol every single day so what you can do if you are a complete beginner is to first apply retinol one day leave two days gap then apply retinol again leave two days gap and then you can continue with this cycle or what you can do is to apply retinol two days leave two days gap then two days apply retinol and then again the two days gap but what works for my skin is that i apply retinol every alternate day so one day i'll apply retinol another day is a break then again retinol then break and then retinol and break and retinol is something that you need to be consistent and it can take up to 2 months to 5 months to even your skin to show any kind of visible and wow result and always start your retinol with the minimum potency first also in the frequency start with like one day two days a week and then build up on that frequency now coming on to the two controversial ingredient that are supposed to be not going with retinol first of all it's benzoyl peroxide and vitamin c coming on to benzoyl peroxide now tretinoin especially does not goes well with benzoyl peroxide it cancel out see each other but the studies that were done on these two ingredients involved unstable ingredients so the new generation adapalene can really handle benzoyl peroxide in fact there is a product a acne fighting product that does combine adapalene and benzoyl peroxide size so until and unless your skin is super sensitive and the retinol that you are using or the benzoyl peroxide you are using is not stable you are good to go but to just be safe do not use these two ingredients together because both of these ingredients are potent and can do double damage to your skin so apply retinol one day benzoyl peroxide another day and vice versa coming to vitamin c i do not know where the rumor started but vitamin c being an ascorbic acid and retinol again being a retinol I guess said some people can get redness because you are combining two powerful actives together so if your skin goes well go ahead and do so but if your skin does not then apply vitamin C at the daytime because it is an antioxidant and it fights off free radicals which are present in the environment and also it does elevate your sunscreen abilities apply vitamin C at the daytime and retinol at the night time coming on to the next topic which is expectations now what you can expect from retinol is that first of all it will take a lot of time to actually work as i have said if you are using a retinoic acid such as retinoin it will be much faster but if you are talking about retinol then it does requires a minimum 3 months to actually show any kind of wow results so you need to be really patient with retinol and because it is a prevention technique it does requires a lot of time and if you are using retinoic acid, said or a retinol at a high percentage then your skin might go through a phase called adjustment period
period now this phase does involve purging now as any actors your skin might suffer purging me being a very good example i am an intermediate in skincare and i have been applying actives consistently i think past 4 to 5 years and my skin does face a lot of purging every time i incorporate a new product that is just my skin you can be that person too so purging is really common but if you are using any kind of product and the purging is exceeding 4 to 6 weeks then it is not purging it is a breakout completely stop that product and look for any good alternatives if your skin does purge treat it as an adjustment period and once your skin get adjusted to the retinoid then your skin will be much more glowy and much more healthier than your skin in the past but using retinoids what you should expect is that first of all your acne will be reduced because it does controls your sebum production and your skin and you will be less oily because retinol does regulates your oil and sebum production and it does minimizes them so your pores will be much more unclogged your skin will be much more plumper and also your lines and wrinkles will be much more diminished as it is a form of chemical exfoliants as it is a retinoic acid your skin will be much more prone to photo damage so apply sunscreen every single day now a lot of people question me about why i apply retinol under my eyes i don't exactly directly apply retinol under my eyes what i exactly do is that i apply a little bit of moisturizer on the area around my eye let it sit for 1 minute and when i am applying a retinol serum on my face then i drag a little bit on my eye area making sure what i am dragging is a little bit and that has really helped me with my crow's feet you can do the same too but be cautious your skin around your eyes is much more sensitive Now going on to couple of do's and don'ts of retinol. Always consult a doctor if you have a lot of acne problems or if you are thinking of going into retinoic acid parts such as retinoin or adapalene or even higher percentage of retinols. And if you are suffering from severe sensitive skin problems such as rosacea, eczema or psoriasis because it can do much more harm than good. Never initially apply a retinol serum or retinoid on your damp skin. It will amplify the effect. which in turn will give you irritation and redness it pretty much goes well with other types of actives such as niacinamide vitamin c kojic acid arbutin anything but make sure whatever you are using on the retinol day that it doesn't contains any other types of exfoliating acids such as another bha aha pha another form of retinol lastly retinol products can really dehydrate and dry out your skin so never use a product on your retinol days which has alcohol or ethanol because that will also dry out your skin making your skin much more flaky and dehydrated some people who have a lot of dry skin can face flaking which is completely normal you need to take a good after care on the days you are not using retinol or even the days you are using retinol to prevent that flaking stage but it does occurs to severely dry people so if you have a lot of dry skin consider mixing your retinol with your moisturizer that might really help you out and also layering up your moisturizer and sleeping mask now i will go into the product recommendation in the later part but before that i really want to mention these new generation retinols now the new generation derivatives mainly the hpr or the hydroxyl pinacolol retinoin it is recently being popping out in a lot of different retinoid based products and you should delve upon hpr because it doesn't requires the conversion that a retinol needs but doesn't has the irritation and redness as a normal retinoid so it's a really sweet spot between your retinol retinols and your traditional retinoin or retin A as it is gentle it does requires lot of time but it requires much less time than your traditional retinol esters are really popping out active esters are basically some moisturizing element or some other element mixed with your potent active such as the gran active retinol coming on to plant derivatives now the name that is being popping out since the launch of biosans is bakuchiol or babchi oil which is really famous in india pan and it has been mentioned in the ancient ayurvedic text now bakuchi oil or babchi oil is not under the vitamin a family it doesn't has any relation to retinoic acids or retinols but it is a doppelganger of retinol which has a lot of similar qualities and can be suited to someone whose skin does not goes with retinols or someone who are not willing to use retinol it does has couple of overlapping effects such as the reduction of the fine lines and wrinkles pigmentation texturing collagen production 
and it doesn't contain any kind of side effects as such so it is really beneficial if your skin is lot more sensitive and you do suffer from a lot of psoriasis eczema or rosacea but do a patch test i'm not promoting babchia at all my dad does has psoriasis i use it on him mixed with moisturizer and his psoriasis is much more calm down due to this oil and that is something that i feel i am nowhere anyone who is dermatologist or a researcher i'm just a normal person who believes in trying and testing so if you are looking forward to use babchi oil as an alternative to retinol do a patch test and then try it another name that has been really popping out is alfalfa extract studies has shown to reverse and cancel out the sun damage which for a fun fact if you guys didn't knew sun damage can directly kill your collagen so use sunscreen every single day and also alfalfa extract has been shown to improve your skin barrier does giving you all the benefit of having a great skin barrier provides you with and you can check more of skin barrier stuff in my niacinamide video coming on to the product recommendation and the fun part so mainly i use my retinols in form of creams or serums and i will be mentioning couple of serums and the creams that i have personally tried coming on to the serums ordinary has both 0.2% and 0.5% retinol which is really nice really effective i have tried the 0.2 it didn't irritate me polar's choice also have 1% retinol and it is much more intermediate level because it is 1% retinol it is much high i won't suggest to any beginners but beginners can use 0.2% retinol from ordinary if you are looking to a couple of esters of retinol then i would suggest the ordinary gran active retinol it is really nice and from our indian brand minimalist gran active retinol is really nice it is really affordable and it is really accessible right now in india i will be coming up with my full review do not worry it will be up shortly and active esters can really be beneficial if you have a lot of sensitive skin and dry skin now if your skin is not sensitive at all and is okay with fragrance in their product because ordinary polar's choice minimalist are all fragrance free and essential oil free if you do not fear fragrances the one recommendation that i am currently using is from dotton key it is nothing that special but it is a retinol and it is a decent one you can go ahead and try it and it didn't irritate me the next product that you can easily get is from phytocell it's called refine the line it is really excessive it also has a tint of yellow it does use essential oil but not fragrance and also it uses colorant texture which is similar to a cream and a serum you can easily try it if you are a beginner and that is the last recommendation in the serum part coming on to couple of creams now there is a cream from neutrogena which is from their rapid wrinkle repair line and that is their rapid wrinkle repair regenerating cream it was easily available in india i think a year ago because i have tried it from amazon but currently it's out of stock if you can buy it it's a really good cream and it is also recommended by a lot of different dermatologists another cream is from roc and this cream is really potent and it is also expensive you can get it from amazon it retails for 3000 rupees it is a high dosage of retinoid but if you are someone who is intermediate or if you are looking for a product for your mother or grandmother it can really benefit anyone who is at age range between 40 to 50 does gives you a lot of results and lastly if you are okay with fragrances this is a product that i was currently using i do not recommend this product if you have a sensitive nose and that is because it does smells like surfex cell but it didn't break me out but if you are someone who is looking for a retinol cream that hopefully won't irritate your skin too much but will irritate your nose too much i absolutely despise the fragrance but you can go ahead and try it i won't suggest it 100% but this is one of the options that i have tried as for the babchi oil i use the nature's tatwa one it is really affordable i think it costed me around like 400 rupees it didn't break me out if you are curious about babchi oil then you can go ahead and try it as for the sleeping mask you can try the cosrx ones they are my holy grail you can also try lanate sleeping mask it is like one of the best sleeping mask that i have ever tried and it does contains fragrance and if you are into dotton key products you can try their sleeping mask i think their sleeping mask is one of the decent product that they have because it does gives you the plumpy skin on the next day and it also does gives you a really smooth kind of a finish because it does contains a lot of 
silicones hey guys so this video was quite long because retinol is a whole another world and i wanted to share as much as i knew and i have a very limited knowledge about retinol because i am not exactly old my age is about 23 and i am just recently starting retinol so if you are someone who is using retinol for a long time comment down below what you guys think about this video and the couple of tips that you want to give me as well as the people who are watching this video like this video if you like my whole actives month share this video to any of your friends who wants to know what is retinol and hopefully wants a simplified version of retinol and retinoid lastly subscribe to my channel to get more of my content and i'll see you guys in my next video and also in my next active video which is vitamin c so stay tuned hit on that bell notification and i'll catch you guys there bye bye and take care